appreciate um, the opportunity to speak to you all. Um, my name is Tara Sals. I'm the new director for the Department of Multilingual Programs. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be here with you all this morning. I, I see some familiar faces in the room, so that uh, is helping me be less nervous. <laughs> um, but you know, this is my first time uh, speaking to this group, and so. I want it to be uh, meaningful, I want it to be powerful and impactful. So um, just, just bear with me as I go through this. Um, and it'll be very short, and then you'll get to go to lunch. So I know that we're all excited for that. Um, so here we are, we are the Department of Multilingual Programs. Um, this is me and this is part of my team. These are my leadership team right here. So. Um, and anyone else that's on my team in the room, if you would please stand, because we need to give them a round of applause. I couldn't do it without them. Um, and you guys, if you don't know, this seat has been empty for a while. Um, and I'm just honored to be the person chosen to lead us into the next step. And so um, I have awesome people to back me up. Uh, some of these folks, uh, Dr. Julie Sue, Margaret Rotacchio, and Sophia Nunez are actually over at Region 10 at the Parent Family Community Engagement Fair. They're presenting uh, to parents uh, all across the Metroplex and sharing the GISD effect over at Region 10. I also uh, got to see them get started this morning and got to cheer on our students that are participating in the Region 10 Spanish Spelling Bee. So um, that's why you don't see my whole team here this morning, uh, but they are out serving our community and our parents and our families. So let's talk a little bit about the evolution of our student terminology. As you know, before I came on, we were the Department of English Language Learners. And so we were titled after the student terminology. Our department name was titled after that student terminology from 2001. And that came with the No Child Left Behind Act. And then the term, before 2001, it was limited English proficient, LEP. Then in 2015 with ESSA, the Every Student Succeeds Act, the student terminology was updated to English learner. And then on September 1st, 2021, TA passed Senate Bill 2066 that said, okay, this is our new student terminology, emergent bilingual. Do you guys notice a pattern? <laughs> in how we are changing the student terminology to be a more asset-based terminology, right? English is not first anymore. It's equal, right? It's an equal partner with our students that bring, our students don't come to school empty, right? They come to school with a vast majority of experiences and resources and languages that they already know, right? And now we're adding to that, we're adding English to their linguistic repertoire. <laughs> yeah, this is for the kids, right? And so, this is, this is my prediction here. We're headed in the right direction, we're not quite there yet. Because worldwide, when you look at the majority of people worldwide, they speak more than two languages. They might speak three or four, right? We have to recognize those regional dialects, those tribal languages, right? And recognize those as well and give value to those. So I think we're headed in the right direction. And now you can see why our department name, we're ahead of the game, right? The Department of Multilingual Programs was changed to represent all the students that we serve, all 69 languages that they speak, right? And so we're headed in the right direction. And I'm excited to be up here in front of you all this morning. So I really wanted to clear this up because I know that our department name used to be the same as the student label. We're not the Department of Emergent Bilinguals, okay? This is the student label, Emergent Bilingual. We are the Department of Multilingual Programs. And so that represents all of the language programs that we have. In our students. Right? So we have our two-way dual language in Spanish and, and English. We have our one-way dual language in, in Spanish and Vietnamese. And we have our English as a second language ESL program. So all of those programs encompass all of those multilingual learners. So I appreciate y'all letting me take you on that little journey. And uh, here's, here's who we serve. Here's who me and my team serve, and we all serve, right? 18,000, almost 20,000 of our students are emerging bilingual students. 
and that's 34%. You heard Dr. Lopez say it earlier, one in every three students is adding English to their linguistic repertoire, right? And the students in dual language have the goal of leaving that program fully bilingual, biliterate, and bicultural. Don't forget bicultural, the third pillar is so important in dual language education. And here's our goal, 100% success for them, right? To completely close the achievement gaps for these students. And so one way we're doing this is by getting our parents involved from the very beginning, right? Uh, we formed two advisory committees for our dual language programs, the Spanish and the Vietnamese are both our new parent advisory committees. We've already had our first meeting. The parents are excited and we're excited to have them, right? As we work on what are our next steps, right? Because we've been in this transition, right? I say we, because I'm here now, so we're all in this together, right? Uh, even though I wasn't here when we transitioned from late exit bilingual to now, we're almost all on the one-way dual language, right? The majority of our elementary campuses are there. And so what's next, right? We're looking at this as a roadmap. We're looking at the guiding principles for dual language education as published by the Center for Applied Linguistics in Washington, DC. And these are the seven strands to make sure that dual language education is successful. So we're gonna be looking at each of these components as a team with our families and with every leader in this room and your input and your vision. Cause it's not what I want, it's what we want. And what we want for our kids is to close those gaps and to have high growth and high achievement, right? That's one of the four goals. So um, bear with me as we go through this, right? As we examine each component and make sure that when we refine things, I'm not coming in here with a sledgehammer because we're already in the right, we're going in the right direction, okay? So what can we do to continue that growth and continue that success? That's all I got, you guys. This, I told you it was going to be short. And to go along with our um, new department name, we have I've changed our Twitter and hashtag and our Twitter handle. If you were following us before at GISD for ELLs, you're still following us. You'll just notice that change. And as you're walking your classrooms and you're seeing your teachers implement those linguistic accommodations and you're seeing amazing teaching and instruction, please tweet it out and hashtag and tag us so that we can retweet it, so that everyone that's following, and you know Twitter is the main place where educators are, are on social media, right? So make sure you tag it, tweet it out, so that we can share that greatness and we can replicate that greatness here in our district and, and beyond. So thank you again for your time. That's it. Have a good one.